Our 48 Warriors and welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about something that's very important when it comes to making short-term and long-term progress towards higher level skills and and some of those more advanced moves. This is one of those videos going to be a bit wordy a bit chatty but it's an application video. Hopefully I'm going to give you some really useful tips that you can go away and apply straight away and start working on to make progress every single session. That's the mentality that I would encourage you to take certainly into this year and the rest of your training because it's one of those things that does make the difference. And kind of what I'm referring to here is what I would call the lifetime intermediate. It goes to the gym or, or, or trains pretty consistently. They've been training for a long period of time, but you don't necessarily see them make progress past a certain point. And that's because oftentimes they're the sort of people who just go to them and they just do the work. That's great. If you're having fun, if you're enjoying that, that's great. Doing training is the hardest bit. But if you want to make that consistent progress, you need to pay attention to the minutiae. You need to be pushing yourself each session and tweaking things each session so that you make things harder. And, and what I'm essentially talking about here is progressive overload, something I'm sure pretty much everyone has heard countless times. You know, it's, it's the main thing with training. We need to try and challenge our body to do more each session or, or progressively over time. Now, this is actually really simple with weighted training because we've got weight and the movements are quite simple and we can just work on incrementally increasing weight or reps. Bodyweight training is a little bit more of a nuance to it and we need to discern how we can apply that certainly in a more micro level over the weeks, which is kind of what I mentioned about making progress each session. There's two different ways that I like to think about applying progressive overload when it comes to training. Number one is through reps and number two is through intensity. So let's start with the reps first because that's probably the one that people are aware of. Very simply with reps, we wanna do more reps than we did in the last session. This is a nice simple way of applying progressive overload because we're increasing the total volume done per session. We know we did more than last week because we physically did more reps. Now, often this is confused with doing more every single set. So, you know, the, the common example given is like, we do three sets of six one week, Next week, do three sets of seven. The week after, we do three sets of eight, etc. This isn't necessarily a realistic form of progression. It's very unlikely that if you're training hard or you're pushing yourself in the first session, that you're going to be able to sustain this incremental increase of one rep per set, unless perhaps you are a beginner and you might make those slightly more rapid games because you're learning new movements and progress tends to be a lot quicker, but gradually tapers off as you become more experienced. Instead, we want to consider overall volume. So again, if we go back to that example, maybe we're doing some pull-ups or chin-ups and we're doing three sets of six, that's 18 total reps. Next week, we're just simply gonna try and do one to two more reps in total. So maybe that looks like three sets of seven, six, six. That's one rep more. We've applied that progressive overload. We've done more work and hopefully both of those sessions were still hard. Very simply, we can keep working on increasing overall reps until we hit maybe a certain number maybe we say 10 repetitions is our target and then after that we go to a harder progression we go back to that six reps and we work on again building up that volume and that's one way and probably the simplest way to apply progressive overload sometimes however and this isn't to be unexpected that progress isn't always linear and we can't always add a rep each week on our straight sets which is when i'd recommend to try something which you know, would be forcing that additional rep. And that is using something called rest pause sets. So again, same example, we're doing three sets of six. We wanna do more next week. Say we don't actually manage to get past six in our first set. We don't manage to get past six in our second set. In our, our last set, we can kind of take that set past the point of failure. We do our set, maybe we get five or six reps. We want to get seven because that's gonna give us that one more than we did last week. We come down, we rest 10 to 20 seconds. We then go up and we repeat reps until we hit the amount that we need to get slightly more than we did the prior week. This is a way of forcing that progressive overload. It should be noted that if you have several weeks in a row or a couple of weeks in a row where you don't see that incremental improvement, this could be a sign that simply you need a little bit more of a rest, a little bit more of a break. Ultimately, deloads, rest from training are a really great thing. Rest is when we make the gains. If you do see that kind of plateau, then try doing less for a little bit of time and then coming back to it, you should see that improvement. If you don't, then maybe you need to do more. Next, kind of after we, we've passed like beginner, early intermediate stages, I would say you wanna kind of move past this rep form of progressive overload. It's still useful, it's an accumulation method, but I would consider something a little bit more focused around increasing the intensity of the exercise. This would be more akin to say, we were doing somebody doing bench press, rather than trying to increase reps, we're gonna try and increase weight 
progressively over the weeks. And we would do this using something called step loading. Step loading is kind of in the name. Each set should be a step up from the prior set in terms of the weight that we use. Again, this is quite easy in weightlifting. We can do 100 kilos for our first set. We can do 102 kilos for the next set, 105. And then we can work on these nice gradual improvements. When it comes to bodyweight training, as I said, we need to get a little bit more nuanced around it. We're looking for a kind of crescendo, a peak in terms of the intensity of the exercise towards that fourth and fifth set. When maybe we approach or we start hitting failure, that's when we're gonna be, you know, our maximum effort for five reps but each of the price sets up to that should be a little bit of a step. So let's use the pike push up as an example. And again, we can use that three sets of six as the kind of progression. So our first set, we just do some pike push ups on the floor. We do three sets of six. Maybe we had two to three reps in the tank. We can make this harder and we should make this harder. So easiest way to do that is begin by elevating the feet. Let's elevate the feet by 10 centimeters. Let's do another set, do another six reps. Okay, maybe we can do one to two more reps. Let's make it harder. Let's take it up another step. So we elevate the feet to 20 centimeters. Okay, we do six reps. Maybe we're close to failure. That's good. That's a nice step progression in that session. And then next session, all we do is we try to start on a step higher than the first step that we started in the last session. So in this example, we would start on that 10 centimeter elevation. We do a set of six, we go up to the, the, the 15, maybe we try and get to the 20 centimeters in that next session. The idea is gradually over the weeks, we're slowly incrementally working up, but our reps are still staying the same. And that is kind of the important part because we would stop these steps when we can't reach those reps with good quality. That intensity is getting too high for the progression that we're using. Raising the feet is one nice example, but a better example with the pike push up, and this is where maybe you're stuck on a certain progression and we can make things harder, is we can adjust range of motion on the other end of the spectrum, which would be by elevating the hands. So we can work, say, an L handstand push up on the floor. We can raise the hands. This is going to make it slightly harder. It's going to increase the range of motion slightly. Do another set. Are we approaching failure? No. Can we go up another step? Let's do it again, and we can raise the hands again. And that's another way of adjusting intensity. Some other examples, just whilst we're here, you know, with chin ups is very easy. We have chin ups, we have our body weight, we can add weight, we can use that as step loading. That's probably more akin to normal steps. We've got something like maybe a planche push up, for example. We can measure the distance that we're placing our hands away from where our head is lowering. Then we can move it progressively further back. Maybe we go 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters, 40 centimeters. Those are also steps that increase the intensity of that movement. This can also be applied to flexibility training as well. Uh, a nice simple example of this is using targets with say the Jefferson curl. So we'd have the Jefferson, we'd have a deficit, we'd work on lowering our hands towards a deficit level, trying to hit that. Maybe the next set we try to lower that target and we try to reach progressively deeper. That's one way of increasing the, you know, the work that we're focused on. Also, we could increase the loading of the Jefferson curl. We're focused more on maybe strength versus range of motion, but ultimately both kind of play a role together. So two ways of going about that one. So that is uh, kind of step loading. So we've got progressive overload in two forms. We've got the reps and the intensity. I personally think the intensity is for certainly a long-term progression. It is the better option, especially if you want to achieve strength moves. It tends just to work better over a longer period of time. And the reason I like it so much is that it helps to bridge gaps between progressions. That's probably one of the hardest things with bodyweight training is like you either can or you can't do certain progressions and, and there isn't always easy to bridge that gap. If you're struggling and you want some guidance here, there are always the progressive programs that are available through my app. We've got programs for handstands, strength, whether you're working on mass gain or skills and also flexibility. You get access to all of that as part of the app. I'll link to that one down below. And if you want this applied on a more personal level, then there is always my coaching service, BSF, Balance Strength and Flexibility Coaching, where you can work with myself, Ulrich and Erdi towards your goals. Link to that as well is in the description down below. So perhaps go away, try this with a couple of movements, just write down kind of what you're doing currently, think how you can make those small incremental tweaks over a period of time, and then see how it feeds into your training progress. I would love to hear from you how you get on with this one. Are you already doing this? Are you already ahead of the game? How do you like to apply progressive overload in your training? Are you gonna give this one a go? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you just enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, hopefully it was pretty helpful, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel right next to it is that subscribe button. If you want to join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe, don't miss out on any more future videos. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week and peace.